Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from My Heap, and uh, so we're continuing on with the Kenneth Wells stationary engine build. And uh, I've learned a few things I want to share uh, with folks before we get started. The next, uh, the next part here to do is the uh, fuel tank and the supply pipe and and the wick tubes. So um, I'm going to cover that in just a minute. But before that, I want to talk about just a couple things real quick. Um, so Chirpy and uh, Richard, they suggested that I use a uh, indicator stand to hold the camera. And that worked uh, pretty good, except that I had a lot of uh, uh, shake from this fine adjust joint. So I thought I went to uh, Harbor Freight and I picked up a, another cheap indicator stand. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just replace this bar here with a another bar. So, you know, I... I took uh, some 3 8 uh, cold rolled and I rounded off the ends, you know, so they'd slide in there real nice. And uh, clamped down here just fine, um, but what I discovered was at this end up here, uh, it wouldn't clamp. I'd have to put a shim or something in there. And so I went back and measured this. This is not 3 8 it's 10 millimeter. So uh, I might have some, uh, I might have to make some more modifications or something to, uh, to get this work. But what I've done in the meantime is I've just tightened down the, uh, uh, fine adjust until it bottomed out up here and so hopefully that'll be rigid enough and and we'll see so there was that so I want to see how that works we're going to try that in uh, in this video and and hopefully we don't uh, make anything too bad uh, the other thing was uh, PGS had pointed out that I uh, uh, really should move up uh, mount my vise closer to the end of the uh, workbench so that uh, you know whatever I'm clamping in there can dangle in front of the workbench and he's absolutely correct I've not moved it yet though but that's on the list of things uh, to do uh, Southern Engineering uh, suggested that uh, I buy some step drills uh, to drill the uh, sheet metal that's probably a little safer and they do a little bit better and, and I think of other people have suggested that as well so uh, I went to Harbor Freight and I realized these are cheapies but I did buy a set of uh, step drills and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try them out and um, the good ones are, I was surprised to see how expensive the, the real good ones are. So I want to try out these uh, Harbor Freight uh, uh, specials and, and uh, I guess if I can get one or two holes out of them, maybe I got my money's worth. I don't know. But hopefully uh, I'll be gentle with them and use some cutting oil, I guess, and we'll see what happens. So uh, when I go to drill holes and sheet metal, I'm going to try these out. And then uh, the last thing was uh, Flute Gene said, hey, you know, um, get you a pair of sheet metal seaming uh, pliers that's what these are and he says it's it, it's much easier to bend the metal with those uh, than the way that you're doing it uh, on the vise he says just clamp it and bend it up against the uh, uh, edge of the uh, of the uh, workbench and we're going to try that so we'll, we'll see how well that works for us uh, I did use these to straighten out um, uh, my folds a little bit on uh, the base and finally the last thing I want to talk about is the base um, excuse my arm so here's the base it's uh, it's painted uh, it's painted gloss black and when the light hits it right you boy you can really see um, the dents because you know I didn't didn't do a very good job um, but I, I vowed that I'm going to try to do better I'm going to try to do things differently and I thought about uh, filling these in with a, just a little smear of, of body putty or something like that to make it smooth. Um, but you know, Richard says, oh no, that's character. And I thought, you know, if I smooth that off, I, I'd be, that's character assassination, right? And now what they've done to Kavanaugh. So anyway, uh, what I want to talk about this here is that uh, the paint that I used is uh, VHT uh, engine enamel, okay? Now this stuff is uh, supposed to be good up to uh, 550 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, so uh, obviously the base isn't going to get that hot, and I'm hoping that the end uh, plates of the firebox don't get that hot. Uh, I used uh, both the paint and I, I, got, I did prime, so I prepped the material with, uh, I cleaned it with some denatured alcohol or, or, or something, I can't remember, but anyway, cleaned the, cleaned the metal up real good, uh, softened the corners. Uh, primed it and then painted it and then this paint here after uh, after it sits for 24 hours uh, You bake it at 200 degrees uh, for an hour and that uh, cures the paint makes it uh, Chemical resistant uh, that was kind of important to me because you know Obviously, I'm probably going to spill a little denatured alcohol or something there uh, the uh, the little um, 
dents and divots these don't bother me so much they're mostly going to be hidden by the firebox uh they're going to be mostly hidden by the firebox the engine on this side and the uh the fuel tank on this side here so uh but i want to try uh, a little better uh bending in the future and and because this uh that was that's really kind of disappointing that's uh, shameful work right there uh in my mind i, I should have done better okay so anyway um the next part of the build that we're going to work on is the fuel tank. Now the fuel tank calls for 28 gauge 10 plate, right? Uh, I don't have, I, I had to look up and see what 10 plate was, or 10 plate was, right? So it used to be used, I guess, in the food industry. It's literally 10, 10 coated mild steel, right? You usually use for uh, food containers, the best I can tell. Uh, but I don't have any of that. But what I do have is um, 26 gauge uh, galvanized sheet metal that's used for uh, duct work and I had uh, somebody give me a popcorn tin uh, that I cut the top out of and measured it and it's 30 gauge so I got I got two on either side I either got 26 or 30 I don't have uh, I don't have a 28 gauge but I don't think it matters um, let me grab these pieces real quick Okay, so I, I cut out, uh, this is the 26 gauge uh, galvanized metal. I've cut out uh, two pieces for the base and the top, mark my little corner square there. And I've done the same thing with the uh, 30 gauge. This is the stuff that come off the bottom of a popcorn tent. Uh, I think either one will probably solder just fine, soft solder just fine. So I'm gonna actually try to make it out of the 30 gauge first. And, see if it's uh, after it's soldered up, soldered up if it'd be rigid enough so i'm gonna go with that and then my backup plan is the 26 gauge in case uh in case the uh 30 gauge is too light so let me uh let me get the camera in position and let's uh let's mark this stuff up okay so what i've done was um you know converted all the metric measurements to um imperial and remember that i only done that because my height gauge is an imperial and uh, I don't have a metric height gauge uh, describe these lines. So I'm, I've taken uh, note of all the important measurements. Um, this uh, one thing I do want to talk about the uh, the hole here, which holds the uh, filler tube, um, is 10 millimeters. Well, I'm going to drill that three eighths, and the reason the reason why is uh, the the material that I was able to get for the filler tube and the uh, and the wick tubes is. Uh, um, is a uh, uh, 7 16 OD, um, but it's a little smaller than 3 8 uh, ID. So I'm going to take advantage of that and drill a 3 8 hole here, and then it, that still leaves me a room to turn a little step down here to solder into the top of the top of the fuel tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roughly uh, mark out the um, where my lines are going to go. And mark that across so you know, I know the first one here is at uh, four millimeters so i'm just going to put a little mark there and i'll color across it so i'm just going to put it i don't have any layout fluid so i'm just going to um i'm just going to mark this up um so that when i run the scriber across it i'll see it and so when i get this all marked up i'll uh, i'll come back to you okay so i've taken some sharpie and i marked the plates up where i can see my scribe lines and uh, I tell you what, Sharpie, I'm kind of mixed about it. Sometimes it seems to work pretty good and other times it doesn't. I think I might need to invest in some layout dye. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that the measurement on these uh, prints indicate that uh, the center of these two holes are 24 and a half millimeters off of the bottom. Um, but uh, this is indicating a center line here and when I just take a ruler and kind of run across this, these are on the center line. So if this plate is 59 millimeters tall, 24 and a half is not half of 59. So um, I need to just make note of that, whatever that is, uh, 25, uh, 29 and a half millimeters instead of 24 and a half. So I need to change that. All right, so I'm going to get the camera set up and we'll get over here on the surface plate where we can start scribing this stuff out. And I'll bring you in here in just a second. Okay, so I'm here at the surface plate. Wipe this off real good. All right. All 
All right, so here's my first piece that I have marked up. Now, the uh, only thing that I want to say... <clears throat> The only other thing I really want to say about this is that uh, instead of measuring from, you know, going up four millimeters and then measuring up, you know, from that spot twenty millimeters, I've uh, I've, I've done the calculation, so I'm measuring from the base every time. So the first uh, the first line is four millimeters. So let me uh, hopefully I don't have my arm in the way. Let me mark that. Okay, uh, the next one will be up uh, 24 millimeters, so that's uh, 945,000. So let me move the um, thing here. So it's going to be 945. Oh, yeah. Dial that in. Okay, so we should be able to mark the second line. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Okay, so that's the second one, and I'm going to continue that and mark out the rest of the place. We're not going to sit there and make you watch uh, me <laughs> make measurements. I'll get them all marked out and then I'll come back. Okay, so I have the base and the top of the gas tank um, scribed and marked and the two holes that I need to drill are center punched uh, very lightly. So uh, the next thing to do is uh, get up set, uh, set up and see if we can bend these. Now this time I'm gonna actually try to bend with these pliers that I showed you a little while ago, these uh, seaming pliers. Um, but as I was, I got thinking about this, this probably will bend it just fine, uh, but I, I kind of like to have a hard stop to sort of bump the pliers up against uh, on the bench. So I think I'm going to grab a, a piece of angle iron and maybe clamp it to the bench and use that for a stop as a hard, hard corner and uh, see what happens. So let me uh, bring, let me get ready and I'll bring the camera back in and let's bend these up and see how they look. So I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so I've clamped a piece of angle iron here on the uh, front of the bench to give me a hard stop to bump these pliers up against when I go to, to bend. So let's, let's try this out and see how this is going to work. It's probably a great thing for uh, small metal like this. Now the first thing, um, I guess I'll, since there's two bends here on the end, I'll have to bend the further end in and then this one here. So let me, uh, let me get my geezer goggles and see if I can get this on here and go from there. Okay, I think I got that squished down on there pretty good. So let's uh, see how we do here. So I'm just going to push that up against that so that I get a nice clean bend. All right, see what we got. I'm pretty pleased with that. It's not quite square. I got to adjust it, but I think that'll work. I'll have to fiddle with it. So let's, uh, let's try the small bend now. You know, in my excitement, I almost forgot. I got to, uh, I got to drill a couple holes in here. So, and in my excitement to bend. So I'm gonna go ahead and try uh, to drill this. Hopefully I can hold it down and we'll see what happens. This is the 3 16 hole. All right, just went through. That's the 3 16 hole for the uh, for the steam or for the fuel outlet. Okay, I'll probably have to fix that, that flatten that out a little bit. Okay, and then I need a 3 8 hole up here, and I'm going to use one of the spade bits. So let me uh, get that set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have the bit marked at 3 8 Let's see what happens here. I'm a little nervous. Okay. Well, that was uh, fairly simple. Just need to go on the uh, back side of it here and deburr it. Let's see what happens here when I try that. All 
Okay, well, I'm not really liking that, but this is really thin metal, so I think I'll just knock this little burr off by hand. And uh, so that, uh, that takes care of that. I'm gonna go finish bending it up, and then I'll bring you back in. Okay, so I have the top um, folded and the holes drilled in it. Now, I, I did make a newbie mistake. I should have drilled these holes before I started bending. So this, this little 3 16 hole is not the prettiest in the world, but it is what it is. Uh, 3 8 hole, and then, of course, here's the base. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean these up and... Um, uh, with some alcohol, with some denatured alcohol or, or methylated spirits or uh, lacquer thinner. I, I think they call. I think in the UK it's called cellulose uh, thinners. Uh, so I'm probably going to clean up a little lacquer thinner to get rid of the ink and uh, the oil from my hands. Clean these up real good, and then I want to attempt to solder them. Now, the only heat source I really got. I, I have a small map uh, torch and I have a small. Uh, propane torch you know that you can screw bottles onto so that's what I want to try now the only uh, solder I got is some plumbing solder uh, I think this is um, this is OD flow safe safe flow lead free solder this is for water um, and I'm gonna use that and then I'm gonna use the uh, flux that come with it now the flux that come with it is a uh, a paste so I'm gonna try to get uh, the the pieces uh, fluxed uh, put together some flux in there heat them up and see uh, see about uh, uh, soldering and see what happens so we'll let me get everything set up and cleaned up and ready to go and I'll bring you in then so be right back okay I think we're close here I've got it all bent in shape and And uh, let's see if we can get it soldered up. Okay, I got a little bit of a problem here. So it's all soldered up pretty good up to the ends, but they flared out. Now I don't know if that's the lighter gauge metal or what, but I think I think what I want to do is uh, get a pair of pliers that I can kind of grip those a little bit and see if that helps out any. Maybe a pair of channel locks. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I want to take a different approach to this. I'm going to put this uh, in the vise and let's do it that way. So I'll be right back. All right, we're going to try the other side now.
Okay, I think that's got that side. Hmm. Not near as hot as I thought it would be. Okay. So. Get along this side. Try to anyway. Now I got one other spot here that I don't know. Or I can just throw it on the floor. Either way. Hmm. All right, well, I think I'm going to have to clean that up and we'll see what we got. So I'll be back. Okay, so I have it soldered up. See if we can get a close-up of it here. Um, so it, it is finally all sealed. I need to do a little cleanup on it, um, that sort of thing. So, you know, it's the first time I've ever tried to solder together something like that. And it didn't go well for me. So that was a big learning experience. Uh, although the box is airtight now, except for, well, the the outlet hole and the inlet hole, but I did uh, plug one and try to blow air in the other one and, and nothing comes out. So I'm okay there. Um, what finally sort of clicked was, and I think I remember seeing um, Myford Boy do this, you know, as, as I took my brush and it was a little burnt, but you know, had flux on it and was able to rub it in and, and get the stuff to flow again. So, um, so that's just soft solder. So if, if soft soldering was that hard, I can only imagine how much fun I'm going to have with silver soldering when I get to that. But I'll clean this up um, uh, real good and, and then uh, you know get it ready for the uh, in the next video. I think we'll make the plug. Uh, so there'll be a little lathe work in that and uh, start on the pipe and see how far we get with that. So this one's went on quite a while longer. Uh, then I really probably thought it would but uh, we'll 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 see here after I get uh, things edited and cut out all right so uh, all right so this is the uh, portion of the uh, Kenneth Wells engine this is the this is the fuel tank this is sit off over here I need like I said I need to clean it up because I got some blobs of solder uh, this is sit over here uh, the burner tube to sit out over here and fill cap here so um, we're getting a little closer, so I'll uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, and and thank you so much for watching, Emma. Thanks again for uh, for uh, doing the casting for me, uh, providing the casting for me for this engine. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, guys, if uh, you find these uh, videos entertaining or whatever, feel free to like, subscribe, and share. And and uh, thank you so much for stopping by and your comments. Uh, uh, I would like to have some comments on the soft soldering business. I'm probably using the wrong stuff. So if somebody can point me in the right direction about probably what I should be using and that sort of thing would, be, uh, uh, would help me out a whole lot. So, All right, well, guys, I'll, I'll cut it off here. And uh, thanks again for watching. Other than that, have a blessed day.